This video is about PCB CNC etching using the machines at Wymere College. The first step is to select some PCB. Don't get a bit of PCB that's too big, that's wasteful. When you do find a piece, and if it looks the right size, make sure you check the back of it, because double sided PCB is no good. Keep searching through the scraps bin and you should find a piece that's the right size, otherwise you can cut a new piece from the cupboard at the back of the room. Then you need to cut a piece of MDF that is slightly bigger than your bit of PCB. Then you mount that in the machine, making sure that you screw down all of the clamps very tightly and that the clamps arms are parallel to the CNC bed. You should be able to give it a good uh, shake at the end and it shouldn't move about at all. Cool, then the next step is to open the uh, etching file. Make sure you know where it is before you try and make a video about where to find the file. Oh, there we go, that's it, that one. The next thing you can do is put your piece of paper, your artwork, down on the copper board. This is a good thing to do to make sure that the tool head is not going to hit any of the clamps, either when etching or when you're jogging the board around. Um, so here I'm just going to jog the tool head until it sort of lines up with the bottom right corner of my piece of paper, um, which is the origin of my, um, my project. Uh, and then when I'm happy with the tool head being at a good spot, um, I can then zero the X. The next step is to zero the z-axis. You do this by clipping on this little clip, turning the tool itself into a switch so it can sense when the tool head touches the board. Um, you click z-probe, it'll go up and down a couple of times, uh, and when it's finished doing that you can zero the z-axis. And now I can click the zero z. The next step is to make a height map. Height maps are good for compensating for any distortion in the sh um, flatness of the board. Um, you click the auto button here to fit the size and then you set how many times you want it to probe in the X and Y direction. Because this is a small board, I'm just probing twice in the X direction and three times in the Y direction. You probably want to probe roughly every two or three centimetres. When you click the probe button, it, the machine will go away and probe uh, your board, as you can see here. Um, yeah, so because the copper material is so thin, you want to make sure that you're using a height map. Um, so click OK to this dialog box uh, and click the uh, back into edit mode over the right hand side here. Cool, and then change your view a little bit out the top. Just makes it a bit more obvious what the height map does. Click the use height map and you'll see it distort um, that, that work there. Now don't forget to remove your crocodile clip before you do the next step, which is to send your work. So this is when the milling actually happens. Um, it takes a bit of time. Make sure the lid is closed uh, or you've got safety glasses on. If the tip breaks it can damage your eyes. Uh, it's better to have the lid closed because it will cut down on the amount of noise that's produced. Um, this is a breakout board I'm making to interface a 12AX7 tube with a breadboard. I uh, hope you found this video useful. Um, the next video is the drill 